All right, now what's going on? This is Greed Omega for Greed On Life. Back again with another video. Um, this one is going to be <clears throat> we're going to be touching on the um, impairment coordinator for the fire safety director's on-site examination. Um, the impairment coordinator is another section that is a um, mandatory thing that you need to know. Uh, if you don't get this one correct, it's also uh, grounds for failure as well. Okay, so let's um, go over this. So you, you you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to comply with the requirements of the fire code. Be responsible for ensuring that proper safety precautions are taken when fire protection systems are taken out of service. You're gonna authorize the placing of systems out of service. The fire safety director on duty will be assigned as the impairment coordinator. So basically, if you're the FSD or the fire and life safety director, you are also the, fire, the uh, impairment coordinator. So it's just something to think about. Before a major building fire protection system is to be taken out of service for maintenance, repairs, etc., place a service tag near the fire command center. So if there's any uh, planned work that's going to be conducted, you're going to have a um, service tag that you're going to put near the fire command station to indicate to other fire safety directors and or the fire department that there is um, a fire protection system that is out of service so that's that's important to make sure that you have that service tag okay determine the extent and the duration of the out of service condition um, that's something also you're gonna have to um, determine okay uh, you're going to inspect the building and determine the increased risk of fire or danger to the building occupants. So in other words, if it's going to be too risky, you cannot take the system out of service. You will have to plan it accordingly to ensure that there is a reasonable um, expectation of safety in the building while these uh, conditions are resolved. Okay? Um, you're going to record all the information into a logbook once you have all the things that I just mentioned, which is the service tag, the extent and duration of the out of service condition, as well as the increased risk of fire or danger to the building occupants. That information was going to be placed inside the logbook, okay? There's going to be a logbook for that kind of stuff, okay? Um, prior to taking the system out of service, the impairment coordinator must notify a central station company fire department borough dispatcher, the insurance carrier, the occupants of the affected area, and we're gonna make appropriate recommendations to management or the owner. So those are the five steps that you need to know prior to taking a system out of service. So just be mindful of that. You need to know this information. Um, and when you speak to the fire, Depart the fire department borough dispatcher, which will be the second call you make, uh, you need to be able to give a brief description and the extent of the out-of-service condition. You're going to inform the dispatcher you are calling from an office building or hotel, and you're going to tell them the area that is affected by the out-of-service condition and the estimated time the system is expected to be out of service. So these are things you have to know. Okay, You can't um, finagle your way through it. Okay, So you're going to give the dispatcher your contact information in case they need additional information. So again, this is all of those things that I mentioned are the things that you have to tell the uh, fire inspector while you're taking this test, okay? So uh, you're gonna ensure that a fire watch is conducted by qualified people holding a certificate of fitness for impairments. Okay, so that's gonna be the F-01. If there are no qualified people to conduct a fire watch, the building must be evacuated for the duration of the out of service condition. Okay? The exception in the initial four hours of the when the affected area does not exceed 50,000 square feet, the impairment coordinator or a trained and knowledgeable person who is capable of performing fire watch duties and is designated by the building owner shall immediately perform the duties of the fire watch. After four hours, such patrols shall only be conducted by fire guards holding the certificate of fitness F-01. Okay, so in other words, you have to have a fire watch during this out of service condition. 
However, during the initial four hours, you can perform the uh, fire watch as the impairment coordinator, or you can have someone who is trained and knowledgeable. After that four hour period, you must have someone who is legitimately qualified with a fire guard for impairment, okay? Which is the F01. A fire guard should be able to patrol all areas in which the fire protection system is out of service at least once every hour. No fire guard should patrol more than 50,000 square feet. These are, this is everything you need to know all of this stuff. Okay, fire guard should be maintained continuously 24 hours a day until system is returned to good working order. Fire department personnel may be on scene to provide additional direction on the number of fire guards or other fire protection measures that may be required. So they may they may appear to inspect the property and when they do, if they feel that you require more uh, fire guards, then that will be something that you will have to order. Because again, this is the law. You cannot um, get around it. You have to have this set up the way they want it. <clears throat> Once the system has been corrected, the impairment coordinator must conduct the necessary test to verify that the system is operational. Once that test proves that your system is completely operational, functional the way it used to be prior to the system being taken out of service, you're going to remove the service tags. You're going to record that the system is operational in the logbook. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, afterward, you're going to notify Central Station, the fire department, or dispatcher, the insurance carrier, the occupants in the affected area, and the building management or owner, uh, indicating the, the, the status of the uh, fire protection system and that it's been placed back into service. Okay. So that is the impairment coordinator in a nutshell. Uh, if you followed what I was saying throughout this video, you will be able to pass this portion of the examination. Again, it's broken into separate parts and these parts must each individually be passed. You must get a passing score on each of these um, portions. All right, so I'm just gonna actually, yeah, you know what? Um, we're gonna to touch on the fire brigade member training. Uh, and this is gonna be, okay. So the fire brigade member training, this is another mandatory thing that you need to know how to do. You need to be able to train members of the fire brigade and the floor wardens. But we're gonna to touch on the fire brigade members, okay? So they must be familiar with the fire safety and evacuation plan, meaning that when you are to train someone that is a fire brigade member, that's one of the things that you wanna give them. That you wanna give them the fire safety and evacuation plan. Why? Because they need to know each exit, the stairwells, the, the elevators, the points of egress, they need to know everything that is in that fire plan. So definitely you would have to issue them a copy of the fire safety and evacuation plan in order for them to be properly trained. Um, they must be trained to carry out specific duties and responsibilities. Um, the fire brigade has uh, duties that are assigned by the fire safety director. So. Um, when those alarms go off, they know automatically what their role is. So this is something that you need to be able to train them on. Um, they must know the location and number of exits on each floor and any available fire alarm system, meaning main pool stations, uh, smoke detectors, um, fire extinguishers, anything of that system, uh, you know, anything regarding that fire alarm system, um, they need to know and uh, they need to be able to assert the location of the fire and direct the evacuation of the floor. They need to be able to report to the floor below the, the fire to assist in evacuation and provide information to the fire command center, which is you, the fire safety director. At the evacuation, try to control the spread of fire. Again, this is a situation where if you are safe, you can attempt to extinguish a fire that is not um, a fire that is in its incipient phase you can attempt to go on ahead and put it out if you enter a room that is that has a fire and then you must remain um, with your back pointed toward the exit door so if something were to go wrong you can take steps backwards and it would lead you back to the door you may never know how bad the conditions can get and you may be blinded by smoke because the black smoke can blind you and um, it's important that you use this technique so that way you will be able 
to gain access to the exit door and go to safety because remember safety is paramount to anything and if you don't feel safe then you cannot perform that duty you leave it for the professionals you just need to make sure that you close every door uh, behind you if you are part of the fire brigade um, to prevent the spread of the fire and smoke conditions this is called compartmentalization which you will learn in the course when you take it okay um, uh, if the door is hot or smoke is visible do not attempt to enter that area or space remember what I mentioned okay because you don't know what happens when you add oxygen into a room that is on fire okay because it feeds the fire so you don't want to do that if the door is hot then you stay away from that door and you make a note of it so that way you can notify the fire department that this is a dangerous um, or a potentially dangerous situation okay you're gonna leave one member of the on the floor below the fire to direct the fire department to the location and inform them of conditions. Upon arrival of the fire department, report to Fire Command Center for additional instructions. You must know where manual pool stations are located. Evacuations should be via uncontaminated stairs. This is again, uncontaminated stairwell, meaning a stairwell that has not been contaminated with smoke or with the fire. Okay, so it has to be a safe route. Keep the fire command station informed regarding location and means being employed for evacuation by occupants of the floor. Okay, as a fire brigade member, you must know the location of warning phones, and that's how you will communicate with the fire command station. Now we're going to touch on the, the floor warden training. So we have one warden, one deputy warden, and two searchers per floor. This is standard. You could have more, but that's the minimum requirements as per the fire department. Okay. You're going to have an initial training and training once a year as a floor warden. You're going to uh, report to warden phone when alarm activates their floor above and below. Call the fire safety director and report conditions on the floor, um, letting them know what the fire and or smoke uh, conditions are on that location. Floor wardens must know the means of egress and evacuation as per the fire safety plan, which again, you must issue them. A copy of the fire command uh, sorry the fire safety and evacuation plan you must ensure that they receive a copy of it uh, the locations of exits and stairwells that's very important for them to know the location of pool station and fire extinguishers how to determine if stairways are safe if the doors are hot or if they're smoked you must feel with the back of your hands so that way you do not get the temptation to clutch like this which would uh, could potentially cause severe burns on your hands. So that's why you must use the back of your hand. You must evacuate people at least three floors below their floor and close office and stairwell doors. Floor warnings must reconnect with the fire safety director and give the location when they decide to relocate. Okay, so those are the two um, sections. Actually, those are three sections that occurred right there that are all considered to be generic mandatory okay that along with the fire scenario and you're looking to be in good shape uh there's one section left uh that has to do with uh common service schedules which is knowing uh when fire drills lamp tests alarms strobe signals pa system water phones manual pull stations uh fail safe doors central station connections smoke detectors commercial cooking equipment Portable fire extinguishers, hydrostatic, sandpipe, and phase one and phase two tests. Uh, there's a schedule for all these things, which, for example, the fire drills are conducted quarterly uh, in a hotel. They're conducted quarterly on each shift. Lamp test is a daily test. The alarm testing should be annually. Strobe signals annually. Public address system annually. Warning phones annually. Manual post stations annually doors that have fail safe annually central station connection monthly smoke detectors are cleaned semi-annually and they're tested annually they're calibrated and cleaned every six months okay Cook commercial cooking is inspected monthly and it's tested semi-annually portable fire extinguishers are monthly hydrostatic standpipe test is every five years and the phase one and two of the elevator um 
operation is done on a monthly basis, uh, which you will definitely be doing when you get the opportunity. Um, so those are definitely the most important. If you have any other additional questions regarding things like that uh, on site that you may be unsure of, feel free to leave me a message in the comments section and we can go over any additional information you might need uh, with elevator operation, which is another portion of the test. is not really difficult. Um, it's just a matter of knowing what keys to utilize. Um, but again, if you need to have uh, some assistance with that, I'm sure I can make a video about that as well. It's pretty simple, but if need be, I could definitely touch on that. Anyway, this is Greed Omega for Greed on Life. That was your impairment coordinator, fire brigade member training, and floor warden training all in one video. And uh, that's that. Peace out. One.